Hi, this is Kerry Artek with Wicked Stocks, bringing you a sort of a food for thought video analysis, a brief video analysis on the present state of the stock market as it relates to the U.S. dollar and the long-term interest rate environment. I'm going to be throwing, showing three different uh, charts, all with one exception. <clears throat> all are monthly bar charts, so these are long-term charts. I do show briefly a weekly chart in the TLT, that is the 20-year U.S. Treasury ETF. I'll talk about that in a moment. But right now, you are looking at a monthly bar chart in the S&P 500 index. The index itself, not the futures. Um, and you can see that uh, there is a long-term uh, rising channel top that we tested in June on our way back down to it. We, um, If I could describe this a little bit <clears throat> so you have some context, this first low that you see here in the far left, that is the uh, housing crisis 2009, March 2009 low. And um, we came, we fell off. Uh, the, the formation really didn't form until this spike low was the March 2020 COVID low. And um, it was formed in part by the uh, preceding high that was several months earlier. Uh, I think that was probably a February 2020 high, uh, the March 2020 low. And then we came back and settled above it some months later. That set off a follow-through buy signal that culminated in last January's high. And now we're retracing back to this formation again. We tested it in June and July, and it held nicely. And I've been mentioning that actually in my uh, my not only in my S&P 500 futures analysis, but also in my daily spy analysis that I do through Wicked Stocks. It is for the entire month of September 3751.68. I think it's likely we'll test it here over the next week or two, and it rises the entire month of October to 3763.23. And of course, the question begs, will it hold again? Can it hold again? Can it hold selling pressures through the rest of the year and possibly well into next? And the answer for me is yes, I think it should be given the benefit of that doubt, given what's happening in these other, uh, you know, uh, correlated markets. We could put it that way, inversely correlated to some extent. <clears throat> especially with the U.S. dollar, which I'm going to scroll to here. Now, this is the U.S. dollar index monthly bar chart. This chart goes back to its origins back in uh, 1985, November of 85. I don't have that price pegged here. I don't really call this a, I'm not even showing that high. Obviously, it's higher than the 121.29 high from 2002 um, because it's the origin of the index itself. Who knows where this chart would have actually began uh, if it started in the 70s. Uh, and so I'm using this intermediate high really as the as the point to construct a very long term. I'm going to call this a 30 year channel off of this early 90s low against the 2002 high, and then again in the 2009 low. And we're right back where ra we rallied recently to within one percent of this band of channel resistance that comes in. Now these are all the way. I, I should. I, I'll. I'll probably label this in the post editing. These are October levels. This is a monthly chart. We're obviously presently in late September or moving into late September. Um, these numbers are far enough apart where I don't anticipate testing them uh, between now and the end of September, but just know that the numbers are marginally different for September. For instance, 111.57 is slightly higher at 111.61 for the entire month of September. The point I'm making here is we are very close to reaching what could be a long-term extreme. This channel top that goes back some 30 years, 111.57, able to contain buying not only on a monthly or annual basis, but possibly through the rest of the decade. We could fall off from here in a meaningful way. So this is, and I'll, I'll zoom in here in a minute. I also want to make the point that even if we do push and settle above 111.57 at the end of any week, at the end of any month, we still have 113.41 to reckon with. And this, by any standard, is a significant rising channel top uh, that goes back to the 2009 low. So it's a 13-year channel top in itself, long term. So you could say that the range between 111.57 and 113.41 rather for the entire month of October is a significant one. And not unless we were to close above 113.41 do I see the US dollar sort of taking off in a significant way, not only retesting that 121.29 high from 2002, but probably then some. We could double the full width of this channel as we could move into the 140s. Now I'm not prepared to make that point because I don't think it's likely. I think we may be reaching an extreme on the US dollar, which is to say possibly an extreme in the interest rate market right now um, or the inflation uh, interest rate uh, correlation. 
on the way down, and I'll make this point as well. I'm going to I'm going to take a look at another chart here in just a second. But you know, several months ago, we settled above this meaningful channel structure, mostly horizontal, slightly ascending. That comes off the highs uh, from about uh, seven over the last five or seven years. It's at 104.90 to 105.82. So holding below 111.57, we can quite easily fall back into the 104.90 to 105.82 area. These are once again October levels that can absorb selling through the rest of the year, and from there we could rally back to 111. 57. But I'll say that if we close below 104.90 in the U.S. dollar index in the coming months, we probably have that good high through 2023. And uh, the interest rate pressures should then ease, or at least that would be the indication thereof. Let's zoom into this chart. And I'll show the exact same levels. You can see this is a this spike high here is the March 2020 COVID high. And as you might expect, uh, the U.S. dollar sank as interest rates uh, retreated. Um, and we fell to a low in January 21. The summer of 21, we began to turn up as the uh, housing market began to heat up. And heat up it has over the last six or eight months, especially over the last year, especially. And uh, here we are. Uh, and I'm, I'll, I, I don't want to repeat the points I just made with the significance of 111.57 to 113.41 in these formations' ability to contain longer-term buying pressures. And by that, I mean like over the course of the next decade. Let's move on to the TLT. This is a tradable ETF. I do weekly analysis on the TLT. I also do weekly analysis, by the way, on the S&P 500 through wickedstocks.com. This is the iShares 20 plus year treasury bond ETF, the high volume long bond TLT, as I would put it. Um, it is highly correlated with the longer term U.S. treasuries. And, um, you know, we had a sell signal in the spring below this 131.59 long term channel bottom that set off uh, the first target. And it may be the ultimate target. I guess that's the point I'm making here is this 103.90 uh, channel bottom. And um, it drops to 102.73 in October, 101.55 in November. You can follow this all the way, uh, you know, through November trade. It is a significant support zone. I think there's a case to be made, as I've been telling my TLT subscribers on Wikistocks.com, this weekly analysis, um, that we could fall all the way into the low 80s before the bloodletting is over, before the interest rate cycle uh, that we're in the midst of uh, comes to completion. But there's nothing to say that we couldn't bottom out here at 103.90 for the month of September, 102.73 for October, and turn higher back to 131.59 over the months to follow. This could be a very long-term play that could take several years. It doesn't have to occur over the course of the next year. Now, if we did close below 103.90 at the end of September, uh, 102.73 at the end of October in this instrument, it has it then would indicate another significant down leg that should result in the lower 80s to lower 70s. This zone here, 70.79 is a full channel extension. Uh, and we've got this low area in the low 80s that I'm also pegging as a, a long-term support area. It all comes together the second quarter of 2024. And that's what I mean by the long-term nature of this. We could bottom out at 103.90 within six to nine months, uh, rally back up into the low 130s, fall off from there. And then over the following year or two, uh, continue south into the low 80s. That is a real possibility. Uh, I can open this chart up just a little bit and show you that four or five weeks ago, we actually had a sell signal that I indicated for my Wicked Stock subscribers that then indicated a retest of this 103.51 channel bottom. It's 103.51 on, on the weekly chart, but once again, on the daily chart, sorry, on the monthly chart, it's 103.90. 103.51, let's just call it 103 handle support for the month of September, dropping into the 102 handle the month of October. That area, that channel bottom, as you can see, able to contain longer term selling pressures. Um, and um, I'll just leave that image speak for itself. Uh, once again, this is our long term support in the TLT. And once again, the point I'm making here is the TLT is approaching an extreme, perhaps, as the US dollar is to the upside, perhaps as the S&P 500 is revisiting its long-term support um, that you can see um, right here once again. So the case I'm making is this targeted uh, recently, uh, 3751.68 long-term support for the month of September, rises at 3763.23 for October. Once again, this is the index itself able to contain longer term selling pressures. Now, if we do close below this formation, that would set off a meaningful sell signal. I don't think the 
Uh, I don't think we're going to head into a significant sell-off. I'm not going to go there yet. I just say stay tuned and I'll be presenting what the targets will be. I do have, by the way, about a 32.50 roughly longer term objective um, if uh, we were to close below 37.51.68. FYI, I don't even show that here, uh, but that would be my next, what I would call a longer term uh, objective if we were to settle the week below 37.51.68. Sorry, the month of September. I keep forgetting this is a monthly chart. I think I'm going to leave it at that. 10 minutes and running. I don't like to go over 10 minutes. I hope I've set enough. I hope you've enjoyed this analysis and please stick around for more good stuff.